This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1943, Reframing Rejection, Getting Rejected Doesn't Always Have to Hurt, by Michael Davidson with tinybuddha.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to ORD for a Saturday episode, hosted by me, Greg Audino. I'm here with you every single day to share content that's centered on how to build better relationships in your life. And today's post I'm excited about, because I think rejection always puts into question our relationships with others, to at least a small degree, even if that rejection is in the business world or at school or anywhere else. So let's hear about how to reframe it and move on as we begin this article now and optimize your life. Reframing Rejection. Getting Rejected Doesn't Always Have to Hurt. By Michael Davidson with tinybuddha.com. Quote, remember that sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. That's by the Dalai Lama. When I entered college, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life. I was going to be an actuary, just like my sister. Judy had just graduated, and she loved her job. My sister and I are very similar. Both of us are math nerds, for example. So I knew I would love it, too. While my school didn't have an actuarial science major or any formal preparation for the career, I was able to get ahead, passing the qualifying exams at a rapid clip. And just as I was supposed to, I got a prestigious internship at a big consulting firm the summer after my junior year. Life was good. I loved my internship, I was being paid handsomely, and I was doing well, as indicated by my performance review. When the summer was over, all I had to do was wait for the call the job offer, and I'd be set for life. That was the plan, at least. Of course, things never quite work out as planned. So, when the phone call eventually came, it wasn't with a job offer, but rather the only rejection out of our six-person internship class. While it was disappointing, I knew that with my great qualifications, I would get an offer from another big company. In fact, I had connections at some competing firms, which I was sure would lead to another comparable job. I did everything I had to do. I interviewed perfectly, and no one else who was interviewing for the same positions had passed as many exams as I had. Yet somehow, I wasn't good enough. By Christmas, I'd gotten rejected from every single company I'd applied to. I wasn't sure how to feel. Of course, I felt pretty bad. But then I kind of didn't. You see, I was never able to study abroad in college. My roommate spent five months living in Jerusalem, and I was jealous. Suddenly, I was presented with the opportunity to remedy my number one regret. And now, nearly a year later, I'm living in Netanya, Israel, teaching English and having a great time. Out of rejection came a wonderful opportunity for me. Perhaps I'm just lucky. I certainly am grateful for the way things turned out. That being said, There is a mindset behind turning rejection into good fortune, and that mindset can be developed. Does rejection always have to hurt? Who says rejection always has to be painful? You've probably been so concerned with avoiding rejection that it never occurred to you that it can sometimes be a good thing. Maybe you approached a girl and she didn't give you her number. What if she would have been terrible for you and you saved yourself a lot of trouble by not talking to her again? Maybe you applied for a job and didn't get it. What if you would have hated that job or would have been selling your life away? As you can see, the idea of rejection is not as clear-cut as you may have thought. Here's a novel idea. Stop looking at everything as success versus failure or acceptance versus rejection. Instead, see every situation as an opportunity to see what happens and get some feedback about the world. You'll always get some feedback, so you can't possibly get rejected. What to do if you've been rejected. You won't always be able to reframe your rejections quickly and smoothly. The fact is, you're going to experience hurt feelings or negative emotions in these types of situations. When this happens, you need a fast-acting toolkit of mindsets to adopt and actions to take in order to minimize these negative emotions and get back on your feet. So remember, number one, don't take it personally. It's not always about you. The girl who was rude to you this morning may have already had a boyfriend, or perhaps her dog died the night before. The company that didn't give you an interview had hundreds of other applicants, 
and the budget for only one position. The rejection might not reflect upon you in the slightest. Number two, remember that we all say no sometimes. When you get rejected, the other party is simply declining a request. Surely you've denied somebody else's request before. It's simply a fact of life that you can't say yes to everyone all the time. Just as you have the right to say no to someone else, other people have the right to say no to you. Acknowledge that the other party is at liberty to make this choice. Number three, forgive the other person. Understand that their saying no may be just as difficult for them as it is for you. Maybe they hate to turn down your job application because they know you'd be a great fit, but they needed to hire the boss's son instead. Number four, try again. Don't let a rejection scare you off of future attempts. You are more likely to succeed on your second or third try. And even if you don't get the result you want, you'll get feedback so you can keep improving. And number five, realize you don't need external validation for happiness. Everything you need to be happy is already within you. External validation feels good, but it's nothing compared to the happiness you can achieve when you realize you don't need it. The feeling of rejection is such a common complaint that it's a wonder that people don't stop to think of how meaningless it is. If you can learn to reframe it, you'll never have to feel the sting of rejection or the paralyzing fear it can cause again. You just listened to the post titled, Reframing Rejection, Getting Rejected Doesn't Always Have to Hurt, by Michael Davidson with tinybuddha.com. This episode is brought to you by Michigan Economic Development Corporation. In Michigan, you can have both a rewarding career and a quality lifestyle with plentiful career opportunities in world-changing, innovating industries, from electric vehicles to clean energy to biotech, with room for advancement no matter where you are in your career. Plus, Michigan offers a welcoming, beautiful, affordable, and inclusive community for all. Live your best life. You can in Michigan. Visit themichiganlife.org. If I would have kept making only the minimum payments on my credit cards, my debt would have taken me 47 years to pay off. These are real National Debt Relief customers. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get out of debt by myself. Credit card, medical, or personal loan debt? National Debt Relief negotiates with your creditors to reduce what you owe. National Debt Relief got me out of debt. You could be debt-free in as little as 24 to 48 months. Visit nationaldebtrelief.com to learn more and get started. nationaldebtrelief.com Okay, and thank you to Michael for this post about rejection, which, even if it's not done directly within the context of relationships, as I said before, seems very relationship-oriented to me, because rejection often feels personal. It makes us wonder what someone else has that we don't. It makes us wonder, maybe deep down, if we'll still be accepted and held in the same regard by those who we count on for various forms of love. It might make us envious of other people's attributes. It might cause us to bring shame onto ourselves or others. So there can be a lot of hurt behind rejection as our statuses are put into question. And Michael had a great list of ways to overcome this hurt. If I had uh, to add anything to it, I would say that focusing on gratitude for past wins is really instrumental, at least for me, when it comes to moving on to the next opportunity, whatever that might mean because that which is in the past can't be taken away from us. We'll always have it to look back fondly on, and doing so helps ground us, helps to keep us present, and remember that life is a journey. So it ultimately redirects our minds to better places, and places that are based in truth, most importantly. So I'm going to leave it there for today, everybody. I thank you, as always, for tuning in, especially on the Saturday before Halloween, when certainly there might be a lot to do, uh, both for fun and in the way of preparation. So have a great rest of your day, folks, and be sure to tune in again tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.